Welcome to another edition of Strange New Pod. I'm your captain and host, Julian Brown, and no, no Jedi were harmed recording this episode. Because not it's even episode. the younglings? No, there not even Jedi the younglings. Jedi in this episode? It's episode 66, execute oh, episode oh, oh, oh. 66. <laughs> I got it. Uh, though, if you watched... Uh, I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to be quiet. Uh, yeah, as always, yeah, as always, I'm joined alongside the best bridge crew. This are this side of Tars Lamora, our jack of all trades, Rear Admiral Eric, the board queen of puns, Lieutenant Brittany, the very felt Jean Luc Picard body double, Lieutenant Hawk, and 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 our time travel conspiracy theorist who is all ready to go. Sorry, Stallion, your weird friend Giraffe is here. There Yay! she is. <laughs> Commander Giraffe, glory to you and your houses. How are we doing tonight, guys? Glorious. Glorious. <laughs> I have so many puns I thought of during this episode. Heads will roll, guys. There was a head that rolled. It, 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 did. That rolled. It, did. it did. It did. It did. It did. Yep. I it think did. a thing sometimes. After you little do. Kayshawn, you Kitty Claws. Kitty, Kitty Claws. Kitty Claws. <laughs> <laughs> that, can, that could just be. Patience is key, guys. Ooh, Bad really news for you, good for news for us. She's so <laughs> awesome. Moto. She's great. Patience is I a virtue. Uh. <laughs> yeah, see? I was like, patience is key. Mm. 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 Okay, mm. We're, we're off to a good start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're all very tired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have nothing for week. you. Oh my God. It's been a busy week, both in, in, in reality and in the in Strange New Pod world. So uh, speaking of, guys, this week... Uh, the Prodigy midseason finale is here, man. Man, it was a good one. It was so good. Mm -hmm. It was so good. We are so ready to get into that episode. But before we do that, we have one goosebumps. I haven't even said it yet. Strange New Worlds. A lot of news there. We're going to go through that. And then um, before we do that, we have to announce our full lineup of shows for our first ever podcast festival. Captain Picard week. We're so excited to get that up and running. More details for that are going to come off um, over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Let's start with that. Let's get into it. Eric, who is the first podcast we're welcoming for Captain Picard week? Well, obviously our friends over at Star Trek Discovery Pod. Um, if you don't know, they're you know a kind of funny, smart Star Trek podcast covering the new golden age of Trek, including Lower Decks, Picard, Discovery, Strange New World, and more. <laughs> and more and more yeah. a lot of fun stuff they do a lot of fun stuff over there Brittany, who else what's old new and upcoming in star trek served the side of rack Gino. that's right you'll know one of their hosts david majors from guesting on our show before <laughs> and that's promenade merchants podcast yeah, which i, I forgot to put on the outline <laughs> but that's them and we love them too yeah. hawk you're up the Duras sisters podcast is all about honoring the fantastic characters and storylines in the star trek universes Two sisters, Ashlyn and Rihanna Hurd, who guested recently with us. They're join awesome. The, they are. They were delight. Join the House of Duras and partake in weekly discussions about every series of Star Trek through a philosophical lens and series theme. If you haven't checked out their recent Trek movies series, it's absolutely awesome. It is. It's really cool. They they went through all the Star Trek movies and it was a lot of fun. I loved it. Draft. Giraffe is lost. <laughs> You're, Here. <laughs> You're on the internet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this go Trek You're podcast. Among friends. <laughs> Q. <laughs> this go Tech podcast is a weekly podcast that reviews every episode of Star Trek as it drops. Marcy, Rachel, and Lewis host three friends who met through Star Trek fandom. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they met. Hmm. I think this is are the hosts. Understand? I'm <laughs> very three friends who met through Ah, thank you. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. like, I'm, it's okay. There's just putting, some missing words. There. We're good. I'm bringing chaos into the. Lineup. I just copy and pasted. That wasn't a typo on my part this time. Just I saying. There's a comma. There's a comma. <laughs> just saying. Oh. Marcy, Rachel, and Lewis host three host. friends who met ah, through the Star Trek three... fandom. Yeah. Can I there we it? go. It's, it's all right. Okay. It was a it's pacing right. Okay. It's fine. Thank it's you. Right. It's all right. <laughs> they don't Moving do those things in French. Does. No, they don't. They don't do those things they in don't. French. It's very true. It's all syllabic. Sil okay. <laughs> Seven syllables is our max in French. <laughs> 
you guys. Uh, the next <laughs> podcast is the Antimatter Pod. They post uh, bi-weekly or fortnightly, if that's your preferred mm-hmm. lingo. Ooh, Fortnite. Like put that there. Yeah, Fortnite. Yeah. Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving to a weekly schedule uh, when new episodes of Star Trek air. And their show is hosted by Annika. I hope it's Annika or, or Nika. I'm going to say Annika. And Liz. So excited nice to have them on. Yeah. Well, Annika Hansen and all. <laughs> Eric, who's next? Well, connecting through collecting, the divine treasury delves into collecting all things Star Trek. You know, collecting like this or like this. That's Hawks. Or, I almost well, that's confusing. Just showed, this one. You just showed, and that's Hawks too. Well, oh, son of a bitch. It doesn't say anything. Eric, no, it doesn't. I forgot to PG, email you. This one. PG. Alert. Oh, no, no. Ga- Eric is for Eric. <laughs> <laughs> There's a beep. A late one. Um, yeah. The uh, the podcast will feature conversations with collectors as they talk about the wonderful Star Trek treasures that they collect, share, and sell. Divine Treasury is part of a very awesome Trek Geek podcast network. Yeah, Trek Geeks. They're awesome. Before yep. I continue, I just want everybody to acknowledge that it looks like Murph is eating my face. A little bit. I like it. Does. And it looks like Janeway's about Good. to grab Hawk. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then like slam his head um yeah merry christmas hawk and eric i'm glad that the package arrived uh you got to see your christmas presents before they were sent to you i'm surprised you didn't Yay. wear I'm, I'm surprised you didn't wear the uh the the sweatshirt eric. yes it's probably in the wash hot in your oh yeah okay there you go. probably had some dog hair on it from my house hey, <laughs> yeah it's all right uh who's up next me hosted by matthew kaplowitz which i hope i pronounced right trek untold is the star trek podcast that goes beyond the stars this show features guests including character actors, stunt performers, directors, writers, VFX artists, and behind-the-scenes people who make the Star Trek universe boldly go where no sci-fi franchise has gone before. Yay! I was actually, I guessed it on Trek Untold a few weeks ago. Uh, Matt, Matthew's a really good dude, so excited and to have him you just told. Yeah. What? So it can't be untold. Mm. It's not untold anymore. No, you know what? <laughs> you <get off> <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead. So run by fans for the fans, Trek Central is a large and rapidly growing digital media platform dedicated to covering the iconic Star Trek universe. Really excited to welcome Jack and his team aboard. Trek Central has Trek Central, excuse me, has been one of our show's inspirations when we were just getting off the ground. Yeah, Trek Central is awesome. Dref. Earth Station. Str- Herf- Earth. Take your time. Earth state. Why do you why do you give me the yeah, most give difficult you the one to ones. pronounce? I don't know. If this one's that bad. It's not like H and N S T. H is hard for French. <laughs> Earth station track. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's Earth okay. station. No, Earth perfect. station track. I got it. Earth station track is a new Star Trek podcast that launched in January 2021, covering the history of Trek from the original series to the modern all access shows. Woo-hoo! The artist formerly known as CBS, CBS All, CBS Access, All and Access and now Lady of the Mighty <laughs> Mountain, Paramount Plus. Yep. Uh, the Green Shirt Podcast. Uh, Cameron has never watched Star Trek The Next Generation. That's about to change with the help of his faithful and hilarious companions, Bobby, the passionate fan, Rob, who hasn't seen it since childhood, and Marcy Phillips. Engage. Yeah, those guys are awesome. I like I, I listened to one of their episodes talking about uh unification part one i disagreed with everything they said but they had great chemistry and that's <laughs> awesome um really fun podcast uh eric you're the up. starfleet leadership academy it's a award-winning leadership development podcast told through the lens of star trek oh yeah yeah good stuff Brittany go giraffe. and giraffe you two can you looked very this excited one. go ahead le cadran pop Yes, we have a French podcast that will join us. They discuss and analyze Star Trek episode. And that's very rare in France. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hosted by Bertrand, Manu, and Commander Gigi. And there are many guests. Many guests. They have many guests. Are they from France or are they Canadian French? No, they're French French, from France. France. Actually, (laughs) Gigi is from like near my region. Now Mm. we're like Twitter pals. Yeah. And and, yes. and correct me correct it. me if I'm wrong, Giraffe, but aren't they like the Star Trek podcast in France? Like the premier Star so Trek they're podcast. They're the only. The only. I've, I've made, I've researched, I've researched, <laughs> and they're the only one I found. So if you have a Star Trek French podcast, please contact me at lyrical under dash giraffe with one F. Tell me about you. I want to listen mm-hmm. to you. <laughs> 
I love it. I love that there's a French podcast. I do too. It's like it's about time, man. Hawk, close this out. <laughs> All right. So our final one is the Star Dispatch, and this is a new podcast from one of our own Discord Collective members, Kara. Yeah. The Star yeah. We are branching out. <laughs> <laughs> the Star The Star Dispatch is a short form audio podcast about all things Star Trek. Yeah, looking forward to that. And then Giraffe, I believe you're also going to do during Captain Picard week, uh, kind of like a Strange New Pod pirate radio, a couple of a short things. Yeah, Giraffe's mm -hmm. pirate radio is back. I'm the captain now. But uh, <laughs> we, we're we still not very sure about uh, what we're going to talk about. So it's a secret. Yep. Uh, we we're, secret. We'll, we'll, we'll talk <laughs> topics a little bit later as it gets a little bit closer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and the last thing I want to say is obviously uh, we're going to be a part of our own podcast festival too. Duh. Uh, so I know <laughs> it's more like, work hey, for I us. I a week off. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no week off for us. Um, it was a busy week, folks, between us planning Captain Picard week and then uh, the TCA, the Television Critics Association, uh, virtual winter tour. Oh, we got we got Strange New Worlds news, folks. We got news. We got a poster. We got a clip that none of us got to see, <laughs> um, but we really wanted to. Um, well, we got our first poster, though, and key art for the show. It's beautiful. You see, like, kind of like a desert planet. You see Captain Pike on his horse with oh, a cowboy it. hat. The and then horse. the beautiful NCC 1701 looming in the background. What did we think of the first poster for Strange New Worlds? I love that he was on a horse. That's all I needed. Finally, they listened to us. All of our tweets have been answered. We're like, give Pike the horse. It, it's funny that they just took a picture from Wheel, uh, Hell on Wheels and just put the Enterprise behind it. <laughs> oh, that was weird. <laughs> it's, it's so funny, all the amazing tweets. Like, if you've ever watched Hell on Wheels, it's so true. Like, oh, yeah. Can't wait for Hell on Wheels season six in space. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Uh, it's gonna <laughs> <laughs> no whales uh, thumbs down <laughs> no whales and no jet reno uh any other thoughts on uh on the poster i i loved it it's pretty it was very pretty i have a Beautiful. little bit you know i have a criticism I'm, to the I, you do you do because yeah. i texted you <laughs> you did you did so i like the poster to which i said let Beautiful. me have my freaking moment giraffe <laughs> i love the poster it's a beautiful poster like, I'm excited about it. We know they shot in New Mexico, so we knew the frontier was going to come, right? But as a foreign um, um, Person. fan, that's the word, fan. fan of Star Trek, um, it is very American. Oh, of course. It is. Very what? American. Like, look at our cowboy right in the front. Like, yeah. look at the cowboy. Yeah, look at that tree that, yeah. that, 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 that grows only in California and, like, around. So uh, I'm just like, please don't give us an enterprise. Don't make it super duper American. It's Firefly. Think of us. <laughs> Think of us. Think I will us. say, though, I, it, it's not like we didn't know this about Captain Pike, to be fair. Right? I, like, he's Californian. My only problem was that it was only him on the poster. I was like, it could have been all three of them on horses. That would have been dope. Oh my god. It would have been very that. Star Trek five. Mm. Yeah. L little campfire that's a, that's with them. Yeah. I don't yeah. have taken Ohura in the background on another on another yeah. horse. Just get her in there. Come on. I like, I it, go ahead. Sorry. No, go does ahead. this does it uh kind of reignite the you know the debate about whether Star Trek is actually a space western? <laughs> I mean, well, it's supposed to be right originally. Yeah. Was... Cowboy Wars, diplomacy. Definitely. Well, it was supposed Star to be. Um, what was that old TV show where they were? Um... Westworld. No, where they were they were trekking across. <laughs> the, yeah, technically they were going west. Was it Westworld. Bonanza? This not not Bonanza. Was it Bonanza? Ah, Bonanza. Bonanza huh? had cowboys. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was one of those shows that a... that he based Star Trek on, right? So Lauren Lauren Green and. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, I think so. A very young Michael Landon. Yeah. Wagon Train to the Stars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wagon Train. That's the I one. The comics, Damn. Guys. Yeah, yeah. The shadow's the in the wrong though. spot. That's yeah. what bothers yeah. me. Yeah, right. <laughs> God damn you, poster. <laughs> I see where the sun is. <laughs> yeah. I do like um, th that it's setting, yeah. like a setting sun. That's very, it is a very Western, like they're riding it's off into the sunset. Of and, Pike's fate. Yeah, because he, he got dead. Very symbolic of Pike's yeah. fate. Yeah. 
There's and, only and not only his fate, but also it's still like the sun is set is going to eventually set on his crew of the Enterprise and be handed off to Kirk eventually. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's cool. Simple. It's a great poster. And there's one sun, which counts as a beep, right? Just beeping once. Beep. beep. <laughs> it was like that was like a meme. Oh, like the, that was, the, the, the clanging of me. iron at the end of Envy. <laughs> oh, I, I that heard was, draft. That was like somebody reminding us that Picard's She's got those right now. She's Shame. Yep. Shame. Shame. Um, guys, uh, in, investors and and the Television Critics Association were were shown a very sneak peek, uh, a horror scene from from Stranger Worlds. Giraffe lost her mind. Um, but the awesome folks at Den of Geek uh, did an awesome breakdown of the scene. And Giraffe, I know that you're like all over this. You want to read what happened during this clip, please? I am ready. Are you ready for uh, reading Rainbow with Giraffe? It's a yes. very yes. long text. I'm ready. So <laughs> <laughs> teach me. The clip begins with Uhura donning her dress uniform. Oh yeah, more uniforms to buy. Exceeding the turbo lift to meet with a much more casually dressed Lieutenant Ortegas. Apparently, Ortegas thought it would be funny to tell Uhura that the, she should wear her dress uniform to the dinner gathering Captain Pike is hosting. Yes, this is apparently what hazing looks like on the Starship Enterprise, and it's delivered and accepted as good naturally as it sounds. Once Uhura and Ortegas arrive at Pike's party, it becomes clear that Uhura is the guest of honor. We learn she's she's new to the ship and has been selected with thousands of applicants from thousands of, not with, from. That's okay. That's all right. (laughs) She's been selected from thousands of applicants for the role. Pike and the other gathered crew members are curious to learn more about Niota. She speaks 37 languages. Woo. That's a lot. Damn yeah, girl. That's that's a lot. Overachiever. And is Including still Romulan, not sure. a Vulcan dialect. <laughs> and he's still not sure. Uh, and he's still. You made me lost my line. I'm sorry. And he's still not sure if she wants to be in Starfleet. Pike asks her how someone so unsure could put in so much work to get where she is today. And Uhura gives us a brief introduction to our backstory. Finally! Which has woefully which was woefully underdeveloped in the original series and subsequent films. Uhura says she always planned to study alien languages. Xenolinguistics mm-hmm. at the University of Nairobi, where her parents were both professors. An accident that claimed the lives of her parents and older brother changed everything for her. She couldn't stand to be on campus without them, so she moved in with her grandmother, a former Starfleet officer who spoke highly of her time in the organization. One thing led to another, and now Uhura is a cadet and the coolest ship, starship in the fleet. So you ran away from Starfleet. No, so I'm gonna no, you, that's that's okay. again. You that was good. Yeah. That was good delivery. Yeah. That was good delivery. Yeah, but it's not the right sentence. I believed it. I closed my eyes. So you like ran man. so you ran away to Starfleet, Pike puts it. A char- characterization that Uhura doesn't seem to take offense to. I sincerely hope you find a place where you feel defeat. Pike continues, wherever that may be. It seems like this, this quest for belonging is going to be a major theme in this, seri- in this series, or at least in this episode. So we don't know. We don't <laughs> a particular, know. A particular poignant moment in the clip comes when Uhura speaks of not being sure where she belongs, only for the camera to linger <laughs> on Spock, who obviously connects with the sentiment. Thoughts on this scene? So I ship it. Let's go. Yeah, I like it. It sort of it sort of makes me think of um, not Mary Wise, Tilly, because Tilly yeah. sort of ran away to sort of Starfleet like, too. So I like that. I think like that's man. neat. Um, yeah. yeah. I, like I wonder it. if I'm they met. I, I wonder if they ever met, or if probably two, maybe like a couple of class or years behind. Maybe you Tilly. Know. Yeah. 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 Hmm. No, Tilly is the same. Yeah. 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 Same class and then Kirk. So a bit. I mean, some years later. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. 
I'm I'm mad that they didn't give us the scene. We haven't even gotten a teaser yet, and they're showing scenes to the the Television Critics Association. I'm you like, know, when on. we get that trailer, Who? we're gonna yeah. lose our minds. Yeah. Like, yeah. Looking yeah. At I want to see the the dress, the dress uniform. The dress uniform. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> we want it. Come on. It's been Come tough on. years. Come on. Mm-hmm. I uh NYRL on Twitch goes, I hope Pike doesn't torment Uhura with that ask not short trek test. <laughs> <laughs> she will shoot that. him. She, she will show him. In the He's already part of the crew, Down. so I think he doesn't have to. Um Guys, Akiva Goldsman, who's who's the showrunner and also the co-showrunner of Picard and Alex Kurth. Kur- Excuse me. <laughs> you sound like one of those fans that's like, boo, Alex Kurtzman. <laughs> no. 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 He got fired, I heard, oh, on the internet. Him. Like, oh, 11 yeah. times. Like, he's yeah. on fire. Check out all these shows. Akiva Goldsman and Alex Kurtzman both confirmed that the, the show is going back to the old ways of, of Trek storytelling with a more episodic theme to it. What, what are your thoughts on, on Trek finally going back to, to that? I feel like we've talked about it every episode of the show for like two years. And we will continue yeah. saying so we it's like, awesome. <laughs> it's going to be episodic. It's going to be awesome. To be fair, it's been like confirmed now. It's actually yeah. happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I just, I'm rewatching TNG. I just hope that it's not going to be, you know, these extraterrestrial that do this thing or have this incredible power. And then we never talk about them anymore. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I, I, I'm connecting so much with the new shows. I like the episodic purely for people who aren't going to watch it every week, like my daughter. Like we we watched an episode of DS9 and Voyager today, and she didn't care because nice. it was just like she can watch it and it still makes sense right. in that context. Yeah. Yep. I like. Um, I, oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. Um, I like that they're doing the episodic thing. I just the only thing I don't want to see is it undo the work that has has come from you know discovery on and that you know because i think they've done a a really damn good job in that making like star trek into a serialized kind of overarching story yeah i i know that early on when when they were doing interviews they said that it's going to be kind of an like an episodic uh serialized hybrid so like if pike gets shot in the foot like he's not going to magically like not be limping in the next episode. Like there'll be like, you know, ramifications of, you know, things that happened in past episodes. They're saying so. there will be two parters. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. It's, no, it, I have no yeah. doubt because the characters need to progress and you can't yeah. just have things that are whole, whole episodic in that they're so detached from one another. Like that doesn't exist anymore. Intelligent yeah. television really. Yeah. yeah. To like, be fair, prodigy is pretty episodic. It is. It, it has, still has an arc, but it still yeah. has like, yeah. yeah, and really has has any Star Trek really other like since um, DS Nine? It's all been pretty much episodic, but they're still running storylines, right? Sure. Yeah. It's all of television. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 If it's like um, DS Nine, I'm fine. Grey's Anatomy is episodic, <laughs> yeah. but it's still a whole arc. But those episodes are all the same. <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> um. Real quick, uh, Galaxy Star Queen seventy seven said, "Giraffe, you read it." Wonderfully, you did. You did a great job there, by the way. Thank Congrats. you. That was awesome. Ten out of ten. Please do audiobooks. <laughs> I would listen every night before bed. I'd be like, "Do you read? Read me to sleep." Pour li, pour li listen, pour li, uh, read uh, read uh, audiobooks. Uh, maybe. You see, now you're just putting French. on the accent. <laughs> now they can't believe you. They heard you, uh, you do it much bef- better. Bef- before we get to our last question, SMK also wrote, because this is just hilarious. You mean that time that Jordy uh, was brainwashed by Romulans and then no one ever spoke of it ever again? Yeah. See, that's episodic. <laughs> Poor Jordy. So true. Oh, so the true. bugs, the bugs. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Joaquin Slowly says Giraffe did a fantastic job. Joaquin so. Slowly? Yeah, there's that's a pun. A great with, name. Yeah, it is a great name. That's an oh, instant follow. Guys, <laughs> Finally, instant uh, the, follow. the biggest takeaway which really isn't a takeaway given what her name is, is that Lea, Leon, Liana, Leon, Leon Noonien Singh is related to Khan. No duh, her last name is Noonien Singh. Though, is this a fake out or is this legit? I know Giraffe is more on the side of, of fake out, but. I, I have many opinion of like the revelation that they gave us because like Ethan Peck going, yeah, it's kind of burdensome to have Vulcan ears. Like, get the- Get out. <laughs> Get out. What is this? I'm not reading Twitter to know this. Tell me more. So, like, oh, uh, Lian Nunyan Singh is related to Khan, and everybody's like, 
Duh. And? You mean yeah. Singh isn't a... Who is she? <laughs> Noonan I, Singh isn't oh. a popular last name? <laughs> yeah, right? I, I swear I had like three Noonan Singhs in my graduating class. Yeah, right? <laughs> one was even a shop right playoff. the other day. <laughs> Uh, they were even in the choir because you know they really could Nunyan sing. And it... <laughs> get off my bridge. <laughs> Let's be oh. honest, even the... that was good. It was really good. That. I love that. That, that, that felt... might be going in the board queen of puns hall of fame. It should. Uh, it wasn't uh... even bad. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta make up uh... other roles for like. My <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. I think they're just like trying to give us like stuff, crumbs, but they're nothing. Like even the video that they didn't release, but like give us like a, a description of. Yeah. If you look at it, there's not so much, so many information. Oh, she's from Nairobi. Her right. parents are dead. And Her brother? Sorry, is this, is this and you're like, the, the parents okay. being dead, the parents being dead is very Michael Burnham. Mm. It's very yeah. of a course. lot of black women in fiction. Yeah. Stop killing characters. black families. Saying, yeah. Please. It black needs history to stop. Month. <laughs> stop doing it. Oh. It's like every other comic storms like my whole family is dead. Damn girl, but you got a mohawk, so we'll allow it. <laughs> you know? Uh guys, anything else on, on Stranger Worlds before we move on? Uh, no. I can't wait. No, no. They they announced a couple other things, right? The the academy yeah, thing and well, so Kurtzman's still playing Koi, but Starfleet Academy and Deadline. He's playing McCoy. Deadline confirmed it. Starfleet Academy is happening. That is the next yeah. series. Um, if you want to hear a few more things that Kurtzman and Akiva Goldsman said and the cast said, you can go on our website, strangenewpod.com. Head over to the blog section. I did a whole write up with all the quotes, which I will say thank you to Trek Central for your awesome coverage of the TCA event. So, guys, uh, two weeks without one, but guess what's back? Guess what's back? It's a strange loop. There we go. I was already covering yep, my ears. Yep. <laughs> so I we... didn't read until then. <laughs> She's like, the, what? So the two weeks that you wanted a strange loop and read the outline, and then you didn't this time. Girl. My this heart. is an easy one it's though. Okay. This You'll is an it. easy one though. If yeah. you we already talked about the Stranger Worlds poster. If you were in charge of designing the first ever poster for Strange New Worlds, what would you have done? Who's got something? Twitch, let us know too. All right. Um that was like just Spock space. <laughs> mine's a little rough, but I would have done something along the lines of maybe not even show the enterprise in it and that, but basically kind of just show like these solar star systems and that and mm -hmm. somehow, you know, kind of use those as like kind of like an outline uh, to draw like a feather, the Starfleet symbol and that. You oh, know, just cool. using star yeah. clusters and that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I have two cool. answers. One is a joke answer, which I'll do first. I would make an entire collage of Pike Space made out of miniature horses. <laughs> just like just yes. gorgeous, handsome mount space with a horse. Eric, that's that's the next quarterly pin for patrons. That's a lot be, of like, work. A tagline at the bottom. It would be like, "Get ready to mount and ride into the frontier." Um, mm. Collective, send me great. your pictures of horses. <laughs> yes, please. We're gonna make it. Um, but a more serious, I guess, poster. I would. I think I would have. It would say like strange new worlds or maybe like a tagline for the show and it would be like only the pair of like the three of their legs like pike's legs spock's legs una's legs and they're like in a new world that we haven't seen before like really cool weird alien plants and stuff and you're only seeing their legs and they're like stepping foot there and maybe it just says like boldly going where no one's gone before nice and then you're like ah it's strange new worlds but you don't even see them but you know it's them yeah i dig That's that I'll, I'll i'll have what brady's having so <laughs> this is a great idea. It's called Strange New Worlds, and you show us the Mojave? Yeah. <laughs> Please! I live here. I see it all the time. <laughs> all the time. Show me Strange New Worlds, Star time. Trek, all Giraffe the time. Giraffe said Mojave is some better ideas. Tired. <laughs> yeah, sort of going off of giraffes, like, you can tell it's Earth. That's the weird thing about it. Like, I like, wish, I wish that moon, I wish that those planets weren't there. Yeah. 
I don't know if I necessarily desert. feel like it's Earth. I get there. It's to it's a plant, it. though. I don't know. It yeah. just looks too. It looks, it looks too like Earth. It looks like, like every like TOS that planet is. that they landed on in the original series. Yeah, right? yeah like, because it's, it's all shot here. It's yeah, all exactly. shot here. That's why. <laughs> exactly. It needs a Gorn somewhere there to make it, it a gorn. little more. Yeah. 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 A blue no. flower. I don't know why, but the Star Trek is bothering me on this poster. It just looks like it's. Off. Now I have to look it up again. It's off Kern a little bit. Like the lettering shouldn't mm -hmm. should be a little bit to the right. I guess their TM is what they're lining up, but you can't see the TM. You should, never, line, you should never use the TM as your center. Come on, people. No, Maybe it, I'm wrong. I could there, be wrong about that. There's some there's some like like it's a well designed poster. I it's super orange for some reason. Like I know the sunset. Because you thing. gotta know about the West. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Zooming in. Um, I like that if you actually measure his height versus the Enterprise's height, he looks it looks like his horse is very tall. Yeah. Um, yeah I know it's, it's very, like, I know it's it's very to scale. It's very to scale though. Yeah. I don't think so. No, he's if so it's to small, scale, his that's horse the is Enterprise. fucking huge. Oh. Okay. I know. I just meant like perception. Okay. It just All makes right. sense. Yeah, no, no, I agree with Brittany. Like that focal point. Yeah. It's it's weird. He should be like ding. So now or it everybody should be further. finds the poster is, is yeah, right. weird. See? Like See? if he was closer it's to like still a great it's no, definitely yeah. got some issues, but it's still a great poster. Um yeah, I'm gonna... like it, the only thing is I, I the thing came to mind was that now I'm keep thinking about the old style uh posters for the Marlboro cigarettes when oh. I see it now. Mm. <laughs> I like that they threw in a lens flare as like a, a subtle nod to JJ Abrams. Mm. It's just a little ding. Yeah. I'm gonna read some comments on um on Twitch, uh, Butch the P rates concentrate on the crew, not the ship. Haven yeah, rates. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Um, Why I would is create, he spark and these bad bangs? I would create yes. a poster depicting the change of command. So Pike is now the commander of the Enterprise from Captain Robert April. Oh, we're so gonna like get handshaking? we're gonna get Robert April in this series. I'm calling that right now. A I'm gonna be right about something. Past. It's funny because yeah. it's coming out in May. Yeah, so that might not happen. We could have had it in April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, uh, wonderful. One, I, I like that one. <laughs> Thanks. So I'm just going to say real quick, I as I do love this poster. I'm madly in love with it. It's everything I I kind of ever wanted. The fact that he's on a horse is just is amazing. But I agree with everybody. Focus on the crew. Um, my, my poster would be, if you guys know that very famous piece of promo art from the original series with Kirk and Spock, I think they have their arms crossed and they're they're looking up. I would recreate that, but not just with Kirk, uh, with with um, Pike. I would make it with Pike, Spock, Una, and Uhura, and have the yes. four of them arms crossed, looking up in like that old school promo shot. Strange New Worlds, maybe find some room for the Enterprise in there, but probably not. Probably not. I love the Enterprise. I love the fact that it's in the poster. Mm -hmm. The show's just as much about the Enterprise as it is the crew. But yeah, I would love that old promo shot look. I want a couple more, more buildings to this poster. So you know where it says Paramount Plus up at the top? I would take out the para and put Anson Mount Plus, and that would be it. That's all I would do, and I would give it to Julian. Mm. I would, I would, I would take it and cherish it. Eric's like opening life. Photoshop right now. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go in front of of the screen yeah, and everyone great, would be confused? <laughs> um, good answers, guys on on Twitch. Good answers from you. Let's finally get into it. It is the mid-season finale of Star Trek Prodigy, A Moral Star, Part 2. What an episode this was. What what a first 10 episodes this has been. Hawk, we'll start with you this week. Your your thoughts on the mid-season finale of Prodigy. Uh, my thoughts are all over the place on it. First off, <laughs> it flew past like when I start from from like when I started it to like the end, I was like, that seems so incredibly fast. I can't believe like 21 minutes went by like that um it was a great compendium piece to the last episode uh everybody seemed to have a purpose it seemed they have such a great way of pacing they have a great way of story writing where everything kind of seems to loop back around in that and it's everything is useful in that doll figuring out the thing with the manacles turning mm -hmm. them into translators i love that uh rock was great I love the fact that we got to know, finally know more about the mystery of the diviner and why he was here, you know, what his actual mission was and that. And yet there is still so much more that we need to know. So uh, much. 
right? So what much. happened to Chicote? Yes. Chico who? Yeah. Huh? Oh, well, someone hasn't for someone hasn't forgotten about Chicote. Mm. We oh. dread learning about it. <laughs> Over it, overall, it Hi, was everyone. A great oh, I'm so sorry. That was the wrong sound bite. Oh. I, I, I'm so I, confused. Hey, <laughs> sorry, Bonnie, if you're listening. <laughs> I'm just going to forget that ever happened. Hawk, continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I love my train of thought. Um, like I said, it, it, it was it was really well done. I'm completely satisfied. Even if, it, you know, even if it felt like just one episode, like, you know, with last week's and that, you know, split, I don't care. You know, it was it was still good. And yeah. I am. It just made me look that much more forward to the second season of this show. Giraffe. With yes. one F. <laughs> She's like, just yes. 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 So, Sorry, your weird friend Giraffe is here. I'm going to play that as much as I can because it's my new favorite sound bite. I'm sorry. I'm waiting for uh, um, a non PG episode and to get play, the other one. Yeah, Every yeah. time I speak about the Kelvin verse, I want Next that. Week. I want this to happen. Next okay. week. So, I'm going to speak about the Kelvin verse. <laughs> I rewatched uh, two episodes back to back together. Um, great cohesion. It's incredible. It's really a 40 minute Star Trek episode. And I realized, hey, Nami, I see it. Oh. Mm-hmm. Where's Kelvin verse music? At right? the end of the episode, yep. da, 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 you know, like this, like, and at the beginning of the, the beginning of this uh, one, of the next yep. one, when the, sh- the shield comes back, and I was like, huh, hey, I should have seen coming the time travel moment. <laughs> Because there were so many hints. Um, great episode. Like the cohesion between the two, they should not have cut them. It's it watches so much better all together like this. Um, so I want to know if your kids are shipping uh, Dal and Gwyn right now because yes. I am. Who isn't? Yeah, I am. Okay. I'm I'm a whole adult. And I'm I was them. not. Sh- I was not sure about it until like, not? these two episodes. No. It needs to be I was earned. not sure. It's be and then I was like, burn. "It's not. a slow burn. It's a slow burn." Thrusters to You're not. not. I'm not. The only thing, only one you're shipping is Rock and uh, Murph. <laughs> no, well, Rock is like eight, so I'm not shipping her. Oh, yeah, that's fair. I don't know. Not anymore, <laughs> right? Not anymore. She's not eight anymore. Oh. We're, we're, no, no don't do that. That's what don't. anime guys do with their logic. Don't yeah, do it. that's true. Anyway. But no, <laughs> I, I friendship her and Murph. Yeah, yeah, I'm good I mean, yeah. that is the, like Murph and Rock are friendship goals. Um, I'm not shipping anyone on the you know, okay, that's a lie. You know who I'm shipping on the show, Janeway, Janeway and Chakotay. <laughs> okay, so mm. that's it. Um, I think that Dal and Gwyn is going somewhere. There were like too many hints at the beginning when he was like, he said something, he was like, Oh, I mean, I, I said that for all the crew. I was like, ah, ah, I see you, Dal. And they um, it was cute. Yeah. Like he, he had his hand like this, and then he went, I was like, ah. So there were a couple looks too. Uh, mm. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was very cute and very intense, everything. I like the callback to the Vasquez rocks in Solum. So all Solum is mm-hmm. built like the Vasquez rock, and I love this. And then the end with, I'm coming, Chakotay. I was like, this is too many, too much. Here, too many. Just too many things happening in this episode. I was very emotionally involved. Um, I feel like they're leaving us with a cliffhanger, but the cliffhanger we can cliffhanger we can deal with for like. It's not a rough cl- It's not a rough cl- <laughs> cliffhanger. No, it's, it's a good yeah. one, but it's not like mm. why are you doing this to me, Aaron, in the writers' room? Why? <laughs> it feels yeah. like a good season finale because yeah. you're like, oh, we can we can relax, but also, what's going to happen? It also yeah. feels I, like a Nickelodeon exactly. finale of a season, like just a regular yes. Nickelodeon one. I know all about that with Paw Patrol. Mm. (laughs) I I don't watch Nickelodeon or whatever, so I don't know. But uh, watch Avatar. Was like yeah, I was gonna say Avatar. Avatar. Okay. Okay. You want to understand? (laughs) (laughs) What is happening? What is this? (laughs) Everyone in the chat who knows knows. Okay. They do. Okay. Um, I feel it was good fan service for Prodigy. Like, like you're a fan of Prodigy, and they like 
tying up like a lot of like little ends, like baby Katie, and he's like, ah. like that was great. Uh, we finally see the real Janeway. Mm -hmm. uh, like this, they answer a lot of things. They give us a lot of things, and they leave us in very sweet cliffhanger, sweet, easy cliffhanger. Uh, I'm ready for disco, without like being too mad about losing Prodigy. Uh, I have to say that as a former archaeologist, I really loved the. Do not look, look mm -hmm. at me. I was like yep. Indiana Jones. I know. I was like Indiana yes. Jones, the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> Covenant. Yes. I can't even talk. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I have to rewatch Indiana Jones, but I'm not unsure that there's not some music from the moment where they open, you know, the the the, oh, yeah, the, the covenant. Like, <laughs> like I'm pretty sure there's like some hints to it. Uh so Why didn't I they close it. their eyes? <laughs> okay. Well that's the thing. At first their eyes were closed because they got they got their butts kicked, but then Yeah. They, yeah, they like, they're like just me. staring at each other. Yeah. Don't look. Yeah, because they're shipping. <laughs> Yes. That is why. Yeah. You're breaking, Julian. <laughs> you know, if any of you were in that scenario, I would also hold your face and be like, "Don't look." Listen, listen. Look this at is me. all look I have me. to say. This is I'd all like I have to say. I'm just warming up to Doll. I'm just warming up to. Him. I just started liking him. You're I late to the game, bro. I, yeah. Okay. Fair. Nope. We're at the same game. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I, I I don't need him with with anybody right now. He needs to grow a little bit more first. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, anyway, uh, Eric, speaking. Ah, of sorry. Oh. Twitch, Nami. Hello, Nami. Hey, I got Nami. it right. Yes. Nice. Thank you. Ah, Indiana Jones fans. It did feel like Indiana Jones. You. Jones. Very special guest in the in the Twitch right now. Welcome, Nami. Uh, it was we great having do. you on last week. Thanks just, for just come on right now. Just come on. Tonight. Yeah, you're welcome to come on right now and talk about that. <laughs> you have the link. <laughs> you have the Zoom link. If you'd like to come talk the episode, you're more than welcome. Um, but welcome. Oh, you love to see it. Uh, Eric, your your thoughts on Giraffe, that? you good? You good? Yeah, I'm okay. fine. <laughs> I know sometimes. Yeah, okay, giraffe cool. loves being right. Mm -hmm. Giraffe is the captain now. Can I? I should put my giraffe is right. <laughs> you, you should. Yeah. That that but should never do. leave. Um, I, I tell you, you're wrong. Always be up. <laughs> um, I like the episode. I loved it a lot. Actually, I thought it was a, a phenomenal Nickelodeon <laughs> um, um, uh, mid-season finale. If not a, if it was a, if it was a season finale, I wouldn't even be mad because I thought that was an awesome way to end it. Um, mm -hmm. I love that they that they use their the communicators to make a giant universal communicator. That made me so happy. So um, and then and those the two couple, guys that were just like, oh, like, oh, okay, it was so much fun. Their love. Paramount Plus said gay rights. <laughs> like, let's just throw that out. Yeah, I was awesome. like, yes, five uh, minutes later, I am thriving. Um, I, I like the idea that, um, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Jenkin oh. Pog, um, Pog. Uh, was, is open to the idea that um, Rock Talk is better than him. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's a good shift. And I hope he becomes the security uh, Guard, because he, he, he kicked will. butt and he was awesome. Because that's the thing. Yeah. He did, he he's so focused on fixing stuff, but then he was so agile when he was fighting that it's just like you should be the security officer. Exactly. Well. And Rock Talk's just like, you know what? We'll do this and this and this, and then she, she just did it. And it was it was so wonderful, and seeing her and Murph work together was amazing. Um, oh God, what else? Uh, the Gwen and her father storyline is very sad and yes. very. I, I like the idea that. Um, the, the divider came back in time. I think that's that's a phenomenal idea, and that his idea of saving his people is destroying the Federation, and that's yeah. you know it's it's extreme, but I can see where it can come from if he had his whole planet destroyed. Yes, you can't trade a tragedy for another. That exactly. A beautiful line. I, was I, say, I love beautiful that line. she said that to him. Mm -hmm. I was just yeah. like, this is why kids are the future, man. Oh. I still think that yeah. she has a bigger role that he's not saying. And we'll yeah. eventually have to go back and get him. Um, definitely not the last time we see him. Um, no, it's definitely not. No. But maybe but, he'll be a better person later on. Yeah. No, I, it's I, gonna be a it's lot worse. John Noble. <laughs> I, they could go, they could go Lord of the Rings. They could go fringe. Yeah, but right now he's in fringe so mode. His mind's all scattered. He is in fringe mm -hmm. mode. That's true. See? It's true. He's very Walter. He right could now. learn to be a better father. Mm. <laughs> There's um, time, Olivia. Um, There's time. I, I I think the idea that Janeway just became good, like. It it seemed like a very easy fix. I know it's a cartoon and it was fine, but um, I know that Gwen ended up 
doing more, but I don't know. It just seemed really fast. And I don't well, know. I, 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 I so think she Eric, was always good. She was always good from the last episode. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, that, okay. that was yeah, an I, act. I thought it was yeah. an act. I wasn't sure if it was either way, but you know, yeah. some people yeah. could take yeah. that. She was like blue shift down. Back to my normal color. <laughs> my hue goes down this way. Other one goes back up. Gone um, chain yeah. way. So what else did I like about the music was amazing. Um, obviously, like always, I, I really liked seeing the Dauntless version two at the end of the me episode. Too. I was yeah, like, oh, 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 yeah. oh yes. I was like, what a weird throwback to Dauntless. Okay. Well, it makes sense. She was. It was I, a weird flex. It was a weird flex. Like, why not? Why not have that be Voyager? I have a little bit. of Didn't they say I, I'm pretty sure there was an interview today where they said that they took the ideas of Dauntless and then they made an actual ship out of it. And oh, that's okay. what this right. one is supposed to be. Cool. Um, right. I watched it with my daughter. Um, I'm pretty sure she liked it. Did you like it? Come here. Come here. <laughs> Yay. Special Yay there she is. Yay. What'd you think of today? Good. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. What'd you like about the episode? <laughs> you like the cat people, right? What's your new favorite alien? Do you remember mm. who we saw at the end? On the ship with Janeway, the cheetah, cheetah girls, the trills. You cheetah got very girls. shy, very got, fast. Right, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. The trill are some of my favorite. I love them. That's not. We're gonna have to wait a little bit for more Star Trek. But are you excited for more? Did we yeah. watch? Did we watch yeah. anything after we saw the episode? What did you watch after the live action one? You were watching it upstairs when I was when you were waiting for me. <laughs> Voyager, Could you are not there. talking today. It's eyes. okay. She was watching that's Voyager. Okay. We started watching Voyager in DS9, so she oh, wanted to see cool. a trill. Did you like it? Did you guys watch Caretaker yeah. with the Caretaker Ray, the big big station? Yeah, that was the yeah, one. Yeah, that's awesome. We also had I had to show her Jedzia Dax as well. So yeah, <laughs> we watched an Jedzia. episode of uh, DS9. Yeah, nice. Well, are you looking forward to Prodigy coming back? It's gonna be a while. It yeah. is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A little yeah. sad. Yeah, it's but worth the wait. We'll yeah, watch other Star Trek. Wait. Murph the wait. <laughs> <laughs> Murph the wait. <laughs> what else? Anything else? Do you want the cat person to become part of their crew? Yeah, you got to. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thanks for coming on, yeah. bud. Are you very tired? Aww. Do you need to go to bed? You do. Yeah, Say bye to everyone yeah. before you go. Bye. Say bye. Have a nice bedtime. Say bye. 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 Thanks, bud. Love bye. you. <laughs> that's it i think uh Brittany, before you go i we, we we don't get to do this very often so i'm gonna read one more comment on our twitch from nami nami composer nami maluma yay she goes hi ha 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 thanks guys you're very welcome nami also i love how you pick up on all the little deets we love Thank the deets. You. That's that's why we're here. We we love yeah. picking up on all the little mm -hmm. things. Especially if they're if musical you deets. Put, if you put <laughs> anything <laughs> Indiana Jones, I'm I'm going to <laughs> like don't worry, I'm here for this. Yeah. <laughs> the are there. Brittany, your thoughts on the mid season finale. My thoughts. I have so many thoughts. But I will say that this episode bookends with the first episode of the show so well. Not only the fact that they physically return to the same place they were in the first episode, but Every single thing about where the characters started and where they're at now, where the theme of the show, where like all these narrative points happen at the beginning of the show versus now, they, okay, you know how every week I'm like, the writers of the show are just brilliant. Mm -hmm. All of you in the writer's room, if you're listening, you're probably not. But yeah, the past two episodes you know, were written by the entire. Yes, it was crazy show, seeing that whole list. Who works in the show. So cool loves and gets it because this was not only just a perfect ending to this little two-parter it was a great mid-season finale i love it but the show itself feels like one giant film to me it feels so cinematic like every time an episode ends or it cuts off and then next week it picks up at a certain point in my mind i can picture where they overlap and i'm like okay but it, it's almost like they did all of this and it fits so well that like it's almost like they cut a film like i know yeah. that's not mm -hmm. how they no 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 how animation no works, i know what but... you mean though yeah. It's so great. All the story beats and narrative are so well done. It's so expertly written and acted and paced, like, especially for, like, children's, like, quote, children's animation. It's everybody animation, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. If it's a seven and up, 
If it's got that plus sign, I'm the up, okay? I'm always watching it. I'm always watching. <laughs> just just look at just look at Trek Twitter today and all the people going, Star Trek Prodigy is my new favorite Trek. Star Trek Prodigy yep. is my mm-hmm. new favorite Trek. This is Star Trek. Like, say no more. I got you. Exactly. And I know there's some people that are like, even though it's a Nickelodeon show, give it a chance. I'm like, don't even say that word. Don't say that. No, don't there's that so way, many Nickelodeon shows, shows that are amazing. There's so many. Yeah. I, yeah, that's the problem, I think, with animation is people assume so much that all animation is for kids. And even if it is for kids, Sometimes y'all need to learn some of the lessons that kids learn. I'm just going to throw it out there. Like, you need to go back and relearn what's important in life. So I love animation, and this just, like, makes me love it that much even more. You can't you, you can't see it. There it is. Haven, Haven fixed yes. it for us. And it's <laughs> Bam. Perfect. Um, so like Eric said, I loved the dynamic between Gwen and her father in this episode. The fact that he used her own, like, weapon against her, too. Mm-hmm. I was just like, oh my god, the symbolism. It was it just was, it's oh, so great. My, it was a gift. my daughter, when she saw all of this, she's like, no father would do that to her daughter. I was right? like, you're right. No. You're right, Kateri. Like, That's the point. He's not a good dad. <laughs> He's bad. He doesn't really yeah. see her as a daughter. That's why he always calls her like my, my progeny, progeny. Which progeny. is like the least, the most distanced way you could call somebody like someone who's come from you. Like... Anyway, um, I th- I'm sorry, just to interject, I love mm-hmm. that moment. It was great for D- for Gwen's character in that she needed that kind of last confrontation with him and that where he's like, you know, I'll show you the truth and that, you know, it's like I, was, I honestly thought he was going to manipulate her into doing something crazy in that. But like she needed that moment in that to finally say, like, no, more, mm-hmm. no more. Yeah. And that's she... also what you call someone. That's also what you call someone who's not really like, yeah, like technically is your blood, but. You did grow her like in a in a test tube, and and every time you're you're taking away her power by calling her like your project sort of daughter or my love or or just Gwen Gwen. Every now and then he calls her Gwendala, but it's like few and far between. I think that yeah. that's a manipulative thing, though, right? Yeah. When he does yeah, that's that, that's what I was going to yeah. mention. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Well, I have so many thoughts, and it's it's fine that they're the same thoughts. But like the she's such a smart character. And she knows that he's manipulative. And when they have these interactions, she just wants to see the whole picture because she's always being lied to. So I didn't buy for any second that she was going to somehow turn bad or be on his side or do whatever. So all of those moments felt really earned and like it made sense for their relationship. But it, it did really hurt when he calls her by her full name and you see that look on her face where she's just like, so you could call me this and it could yeah. mean something, but she knows it doesn't. So like it hurts your heart so much. So much. So, um, but yeah, the character growth for all the characters, and I mean like Jankum Pog, I mean Zero. Zero came out of hiding, stood up in front of the Diviner and was like, I'll show you what'll drive you crazy. Like, Zero was on the run in the first episode. Mm-hmm. Zero has been afraid of the Diviner this whole time, even though Zero cares so much about their friends. Like, Rock going from this small, shy little girl who was only seen as like this big source of power is now so confident in herself that she literally tells the lead engineer, no, this is how you do it. Stop telling me to do this. We're switching spots. Like, I could do more than hold a freaking yeah. door. Yeah. And Jenkum mm-hmm. realizes he doesn't have to be the goopy, I'm going to fix it and make jokes guy. I can protect my friends. Yeah. I, I can actually serve a bigger role. Like every single person, doll. Like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I cried. I'll just mention that I cried because I could talk about this episode until I die. Nice. It was so good. 10 uh, out of 10. Yay! That was so good in this episode. He man. was good. Oh, he, was, he had two, two. Pew, pew, pew. Um, he was like, "Let you touch her," and I was like, "Yes, no." I'm, I'm gonna Fire start. I'm just gonna start by by going down my list of notes. And, and Nami, I'm not just saying this because you're here. It's literally the first thing on top of my notes because this is how my brain works. Watching TV, um, I, I always listen to music first and watch the show second. But really nice little hints, as has already been mentioned, of the Kelvin verse themes, like the ding 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 ding. ding. So mm-hmm. awesome. Oh, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. I'm going to use a swear word because it is the only way to describe her. Forgive me, but oh my God, the yeah. badass little Cation. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, is that a swear word? Holy I mean, girl like, boss. Go her go moment boss. where like we, we have a voice now and guess what? You are in big trouble because of that. Yeah. And the club, they're moment. all just like climbing yeah. on top of Dreadnought and like, 
man, whoever storyboarded was like, you know what? We should have this really fierce scene where her claws come out. And then it just goes like full on anime. Fade yeah, to black yeah it, it was the, the berserk yeah. little cut scene when they used to um, do the cut when you couldn't see it. Like in America, they would cut out the blood. It would be like... <laughs> Yeah, I just uh, that was Blinds. I think like one of my one of my favorite mm-hmm. scenes ever. Um, I'm gonna make one little complaint. I think it's something we'll probably all agree with. Like I feel and and maybe this isn't the last we're gonna see of him. But if it is, Dreadnought kind of ended up being a little worthless. And I, I think he's in the ship. A, yeah, he robot. might be. He could he could be in the ship, but he's in the he, ship. I I need more from Dreadnought. Hopefully, we see more of him because he's Shakotay. He Kind of went out like a chump. He's kind not, of went out yeah. like a chump. Um, time Shut travel. Time travel. Who doesn't love time travel? Um, also, a really nice hint. This is me going back to my music brain again. Thanks, Dad. Nice little hint of the Voyager theme, Voyager music near the end of the episode. All caps. Um, and then uh, I, too, have a, a special guest coming on the show tonight. It's not who you think. Uh, Janeway. What? Admiral Janeway's coming? Vice- oh. No, I wait. No, but I happen I happen I to say, live. You can't do that. I can't do that. I'm sorry. That was <laughs> cheap. That was <laughs> cheap. Not ready. <laughs> that was cheap. But I'm gonna have her come on real quick and talk because I live with a with a Janeway stan. And the minute that she she popped up on screen, uh my wife Karen, who's been on our show before, absolutely lost it. And I want her to mm-hmm. get a few minutes to to talk about the moment she's oh, wow, slowly coming I, I tried to give her <laughs> as, it's fine. as much time to get over there hey, she Janeway. Is, hey you you come sit and talk about that moment go karen go ah, nice she's still a wiggle song Hello. Um, <laughs> she was oh actually God. disco inferno oh <laughs> mm-hmm. i I don't know. Like, I just, I was so excited to see Admiral Janeway. And I was like, Admiral Janeway. Like, I was just, and, mm-hmm. and I, I'm really excited about the possibility of Admiral Janeway and, uh, hologram Janeway oh. being in the same room. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and then she was like, you could have a coffee drinking fun. contest. Yeah. That's not fair. One doesn't have a they stomach. <laughs> we just drink coffee together and like, look, look cool um yeah then she was like we've got to find out what happened to Jacote." and i was like oh no <laughs> <laughs> he did <laughs> well, oh, no. <laughs> maybe he's in the pattern oh. buffer <laughs> yeah we can hide there. We're fine. <laughs> he's been there for a, a, little while. a little while hey scotty did it yeah why not check huh it's canon uh-huh. that's fair is there <laughs> you never know <laughs> Did you watch it with your kids today? Uh, when the the episode? Yes. Yeah. yeah did, we did watched your, it with Cecily. Was she was she like, hey, there's the real one finally? Because yeah. that's what my daughter did. She's like, oh, I never thought the real one would ever show up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Cecily first was like, wait, who is that? And I was like, it's Janeway. And she's like, like she's no, old. it's not Janeway. And I was like, no, it's the real Janeway. <laughs> she's just a little bit older. <laughs> and then she was like, oh. <laughs> She's like, but why doesn't she have a bun? <laughs> yeah, it throws you off. You'd be That's like, well, fair. she doesn't she's always like, have a bun in the show. She's got the later season uh, of Voyager <laughs> hair, you know? Mm-hmm. The bob. The bob. From the bun to mm. the bob. A Jane like Way autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> I say Classy. Jane Way to go. Because mm-hmm. two's mm-hmm. better than one. Uh, I, I will say that um, I know Giraffe said that uh, what's his name was Chicote. But Dan Hagerman said that uh, the fans who are saying that are digging in the wrong place. Uh-huh. Lies. Lies. Uh-huh. It's written saying, behind me. Look, uh-huh. you're saying digging in the wrong place because he has a grave. <laughs> oh. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you're listening. Bernie made a joke. <laughs> Imagine they hired uh, Beltran just to do that line, that one line, and that's all after he's dead. <laughs> Imagine. Oh, basically, <laughs> God. they're like, you wanted Chicote and Janeway to finally get together. Well, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the true oh. dreadnought. Amazing, amazing. Heartbreak. Ah, <sighs> good times. Yeah, good times. I loved it though. Mm-hmm. I liked hearing both Janeways. I loved even when Hollow Janeway did the little shove, and you're just like, heck yeah, she's got mm-hmm. some. She you pulled off that little you? pack from uh, the Diviner. I was like, ooh, brutal. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. As soon as she did, I was like, oh, she just baned him. And he was like, 
Yeah. Yeah. That was that was that was my other other franchise uh, Easter egg for this was when she held the hand up and said upgrades. And I was like, Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even oh, think of that. That's the thing. There were so many there were so many Easter eggs. It was almost like if you blinked, it was like a different sci fi show. They were like riffing on. You're like, this is so great. I know. Oh, it was awesome. So good. Out ten. I got to say, though, that like five seconds of like bad Janeway uh, when when he turned her into like the bad, bad hologram. I was like, Ooh, that's a cool. Mm -hmm. You're like she could still get it. I'm <laughs> yeah, and then this week's episode started, and you're like, "Oh, okay, she was good the whole time." Whew, I don't have to talk to a therapist about this. Cool. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I can't afford therapy. We're fine. Hmm. Wah, wah, wah. That's where all my humor comes from. We're we're good. We're living yeah. the dream. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Living our best lives. Are we? Are we? Are we going to talk about the rescue and dreadnought now? The All right, I'm going to hand Julian back. All right. Mm. All right. Julian's like, I want to talk. Great seeing you, Karen. <laughs> Bye, Karen. I have returned <laughs> from the dark side. Just um, like <laughs> that was, Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so I, I wanted to get her in for the Janeway moment. I, I have a couple more things that we're going to go into the, the more detail. Um, All good things. All good things. Let's come to the end. Flash end game. The uniform, the badge. That's got to be a major note because it's not the updated Picard badge. It's the all good things slash end game badge and kind of like mm. play on that uniform. So this is still possibly now we're looking at alternate timelines. And I think that's like a really important note that they went specifically with that badge. Now that we have two different yes. versions of that. Thank you, giraffe. Um, exactly. So Karen turned down my, my volume. I think she did at least, or I'm imagining. So we, we have been too loud. We, we have AOS. So what is that going to be? A boy, like alternate Voyager. I don't know. I thought it was going to be like animated Voyager. And then this is, <laughs> this is the last thing I, I was kind of hinting at when we were off mic, but, uh, there's the shot right before Jankum's like, hey, we can we can like weaken their shields, but we have to fire on their shield emitter. And uh, Dahl's got that great line. I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but target pr uh, protostar. And then the view screen, it's right out of Nemesis when mm -hmm. when the scimitar is is chasing the Enterprise and the scimitar is still cloaked and Enterprise doesn't know that the scimitar is behind it. And I think Shinzon's making this whole speech like I'm a predator, something, something, something. I'm evil, bad, and it's just a shot of the Enterprise, and then the scimitar starts firing like rapidly you on the Enterprise. You sounded just it's like a... Shinzon. Got to say. You. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, it, that's it's... the most line Tom Hardy ever said in a row. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, anyway, it was it was so. a really cool shot. Tom Hardy shot. is that's... notorious for only doing two takes, and then he leaves. So <laughs> nice. Half the time, it's like. Not even him. <laughs> I, I wonder about the alternate timeline thing with the com badges because this is still 2383, right? 2383. And Picard happens in 2399. So, it's, again, like, it's so, there's so much like timey wimey time yeah. travel stuff going on. Technically, too. technically, as soon as the guy went back in the past, this is an alternate it's timeline. Changed. It's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let, let's, mm -hmm. let's get into some more detail, guys. Let's talk about the rescue of of all of the the miners and and the love and doll being like hey you guys are having your moment but i gotta get this this thing working i i, I love that um dreadnought gets his butt kicked we 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 all get our wish and the baby cation is rescued she was something fierce mm -hmm. what, are, what are our whole thoughts I uh, i'm 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 sad that some of them didn't come with them like it seems weird yeah. that they just decided they to go off they do have they their own ship i wanted the cation to join their crew that's let's be honest. That's yes, what I wanted. Come on. I did too. Make the Cation the security officer. Come on, party G. It makes sense. Be brave. Be brave. I will say this episode this. gave me a uh, Jominal sort of vibes. You know, you have all these, <laughs> right? Okay, giraffe got it. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's a very important. <laughs> it's a big book. It is actually. It's pretty pretty dang thick. But anyway, it's about a bunch of French miners that like revolt and overthrow the people running their town, basically. A lot of really great, I learned a lot of great vocab from that. A lot of very animal-like vocab. It's it's intense. How did you think of that? I'm literally like a French literature like graduate. <laughs> it didn't come to <laughs> my mind at all. But like, as soon as I, I saw it. them, I was like, the miners are having a revolution. I was like, Germino, Germino, let's go. Uh, 
Yeah. Dun, 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 anyway, dun, dun, dun. look it up, sorry. guys. It's Les all Mis. about sorry. sowing the seeds going... of revolution, sorry. germinating. Like in Les Mis. <laughs> like in Les Mis. Yeah, like, well, yeah. <laughs> a little more starvation. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> a lot Dog of French hair. stories are like One that. It's about revolution. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, I loved, I mean, the miners all, like, working together to overthrow. The fact that they were, finally were able to talk to each other. Like, I'm a language nerd like Giraffe, and it just makes me, like, so happy when they're finally able to communicate. Because I'm like, that's the only thing that was keeping you apart. It's not being able to talk. And then when the two miners were like, okay. finally, I can express my feelings to you. I was like, oh, my God. I have opinions mm-hmm. on this. You like, can. you stuck me on, like, a asteroid with a person that doesn't speak my language for i'm pretty sure in three months i figured something out something yeah i developed something like yeah you would make your own sign language or pigeon language they can't talk like come on like you see the expense like they just make up like a language mix of everything it's that's the thing that i'm like yeah come on are you talking about belter creole (laughs) (laughs) yeah actually are so important though and they do develop yeah. so quick. So, like, yeah, like like you said, within three to four months, you would realistically develop some sort of language with somebody. I would disagree. I think that was the whole point of the Watchers and that, to keep them from actually speaking to each other. Uh, That's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. the scary robot's telling you not to make up sign language then. I guess you can. Haven, uh, sorry, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read this real quick. Haven, it is literally the all good things about it. It's not, it's not a variant. It's literally the, the yeah, badge. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally it's, the badge. It's, there's it's not a variant it's there's no there's no that is ex- yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> i just had to point that out because there's no there's no i have it next to me it's yeah it's the same thing um anything else on on that on the on the rescue i know i, I possibly interrupted someone there i had to get that out no um, you just said they're know, not all about bored of the stuff. prodigy history <laughs> channel guy aliens time travel time travel um we know now <laughs> that the the diviner He's gone back in time to save Solemn, which is, by the way, I love the name of the planet. Mm-hmm. I thought, like, all planets in Star Trek get names, name of the week, planet of the week. But, like, I don't know. There's something, like... They always have I a feel, four in them I for feel whatever it. reason. Uh, Solemn. Um, he goes back in time to, to or has, attempting to save their planet. Uh, obviously, his plan did not work. Um, we, we also know that currently, and and I, I feel like that should be the, the, the keyword place. Uh, sorry, the keyword here is currently... The series takes place in the, and this is more of a guess, uh, all good things beginning of end game timeline a little bit before that, because I think Aaron confirmed that we're still in 2484. Um, that's judging by the badge and and the style of uniform at the end with Janeway and her, her crew on the, what is it? The Dauntless, right? The Dauntless. Yep. The Dauntless. The Dauntless. Um, draft, just, just go off. I thought you were going to say the doll list, and I'm like, that makes sense. He's not on the ship. Okay, so... (laughs) She needed time. (laughs) What? What did you say? (laughs) We're moving on. I just... Nobody even went, ugh. Like, I don't know. No, I... I, You know, like, the meme you did of, like, me going, like... Yes. So, (laughs) when... When, uh... J-Way goes, like, Chakotay, I'm coming for you. I'm like... Wait, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. So the protostar was buried, and the guy was looking for it. How mm-hmm. long has the protostar been buried? So how long has it been disappeared? Did Chakode moved back in the protostar in time too because they knew something about Solom and the guy they sent back, and Maybe. then got buried there? So he's dead for like forever. Like, how long has it been? And I'm, like, trying to, like, figure out, like, where's the crew? What happened? Why is it buried? Couldn't could not have just crashed yeah. inside of there? Okay, Star Trek is always, like, like for real, 90% of everything in space in Star Trek is caves. Yeah. Like, every single yeah. episode, there's a cave. Like, come on. But yeah. the first I feel like the cave. it was kind of, like, they've been mining that place forever so much that the guy yeah. had to extend his life to find it so he got like the Drek, uh, can, I interrupt you real quick? can i interrupt you real quick because I, I know i'm gonna forget to say this how about john noble's acting when he when his life force does get cut off right mm-hmm. so freaking good in his that, gasps that were so moment. real they I were my so daughter. Real. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, go ahead. I, I needed to say that. So <laughs> that guy went back right in the past and then got in this this asteroid to look for that ship. He hired and 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 like no, not hired, like kidnapped and bought people to dig that place for years right years it's an asteroid it's not a planet an asteroid and they barely just find it now so how long that thing has been there like come on like seriously how long Gwendola is like what 17 i was gonna say too and, long and <laughs> and and he's been he had to extend his life and he had mm-hmm. then to do like to have a progeny so he's been there for some time uh, Where is everybody? So uh, oh. on Memory Alpha, uh, it says that the protostar was abandoned in 2366 there. I don't know where they're getting this. Um, and what, we're in 2383 now? 2384 84. now. 84, yeah. So 20-ish years? Yeah, it, it Wait, sense. when does, we, when does Voyager come that's back? That's what I'm What's looking up right now. Because uh, I think it takes place have, five years, five now? years, five years after uh, a Voyager comes back. I think that was the date. Giraffe, so we need to give it's... you a whiteboard so you can do your equations, you know? <laughs> not, not, not equations, I'm saying equations. No, you know, I want the mariner thing with like the threads and like the mm-hmm. pictures and be like, Pepe Sylvia. Yep. You know, it, Sylvia. it says by 2366, <laughs> the protostar was abandoned. So it might have been there before. So oh, and there's something sketchy. The Voyager going on returned the in 2378. That doesn't make okay, sense. So, so it's that doesn't five make years at any it's sense five that, years. that the protostar crashed when it did. Yeah. So memory alpha it has traveled in time. Traveled in time. It's right? not like memory alpha's got the best reputation. No, they don't. <laughs> and Chaco Day, where is he? Maybe he's super old now. Maybe he's like stressed the conscience in a robot. Who knows? Okay, real quick on Twitch, oh. uh, you and my Amy says the diviner was searching, searching in twenty three sixty six. Uh, we don't know exactly for how long. God damn it, memory alpha. <laughs> this really is our Pepe Sylvia moment. Mm-hmm. We're like, I'm really, if we you. took a step back, we just realized Charlie's illiterate and it's just Pennsylvania. But like, we're not there yet. <laughs> you know? Hawk, did you have something? I know you were. Oh, I just wanted to. Uh, add about uh, the diviner and extending his life or was it kind of helping him preserve his life because if we remember what Kovic said about time travel in you know is he going discovery. through what Giorgio is going through yeah, yeah maybe. Was going it through. can make you very sick yeah <laughs> yeah possible yeah. but so, still doesn't explain the date like the protostar has been here it's been there way too long way you know who too has long all the there's still the so writers much room. mystery Aaron left has like, all Aaron, Aaron Aaron uh, if you're if you're listening or if you're list- you listen later, if Nami's listening, I'm, I'm maybe Aaron listens too. If you're yeah. listening, we'd like to invite you back for when Prodigy <laughs> comes back for episode uh, 11, 111 when it comes back on. So consider this your official invitation. Um, guys, final question before we get into our ratings. What happened in this timeline, right, where Starfleet does make first contact with Solemn that it would, it would cause basically a full planet to just annihilate itself. I know that there was discourse and, and, and civil war that, you know, half of the people were like, Oh, we're not alone. This is great. And the other half were like, well, this sucks. We were the dominant force in the galaxy. Like, wh- what do you guys think that happened here? Like sometimes that's all it takes though. And that, you know, the mirror, the mirror, they were content in the knowledge that they were alone in the universe and that they loved the fact that, that, you know, they were it, soul. Yeah. Solemn. Mm. It's, the, it's it's in the name for a reason, and that's why he's the solemn alone at the end or whatever. So actually, if I just got nerd a little bit about Latin, yeah, solemn can be solus, which means like alone, but mm-hmm. it's soil too, the soil, like the Ooh. earth. Mm. Yeah. So I kind of like the hmm. Like, and if you, you notice know? everything, all the life disappears. So what if it's something solemn related? Yeah, and uh, you know that a moral star is Tars Lamora yeah. scrambled. It's like okay. Like I'm, you're working with the words. Mm-hmm. You love anagrams. Oh yeah, Aaron. Aaron said that that was a uh, what, what do you call those again? Um, anagram. 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 Yeah, just that. <laughs> I, I well, the, the reason I asked because I I thought you said synonym. I was like I wanted to make sure it wasn't synonym and anagram. Anyway. Mm, cinnamon. Cinnamon. Mm, I like cinnamon. Toast. <laughs> I do think it's a good reflection on first count type though. Like yeah. if tomorrow aliens arrive here, what do you think is going to happen? 
Republican yeah, Democrats like, are going to have a civil war. That's literally what it, like, it feels very Mexico. realistic based on what's happening <laughs> yeah. in our real world yeah. right now. Based yeah. on yeah. goddamn I, I calm voice. It. I was like, something <laughs> would cause this for sure. Yeah. And it wouldn't even be, it's the same way the Federation accidentally caused another civilization to, you know, fall apart because yeah, of radiation Delta that wasn't even, yeah. they didn't yeah. even mean to do. So yeah. them just showing up and being like, hey, you're not alone. Join us is enough to have half the population be like, what? And the other half be like, let's join. Yeah. <sighs> I did oh, love that. That was, I did love that the Diviner's plan was a good nod to uh, First Contact, though. The movie. It, it's a good not to first contact his whole thing though about the federation is also and i i think i've said this before on the show it's very star trek beyond it's very uh idris alba and his his whole strife and i it's also I very, very modern track when he showed up and it was the whole mm -hmm. thing <laughs> <laughs> was that year of hell yeah 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 where he showed it's up very... and was like going through time to prevent you know you change yeah. one thing it prevents this but... planet from happening Move that butt. It's very modern Trek. You see that in every series right now, like people being like unsure about the Federation. You see it in Picard. You see it in Start uh, Star Trek Discovery season four, season three. People not believing in this. I feel like we're going in a new era of Trek. Like you, everybody Utopia loves nice. the Federation in Lower Decks, though. <laughs> Except Star Trek. Utopia is nice. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Sorry. Me. Yeah. You. Yeah. Oh, I said, but the kids believe, though. I love that they, they learn the ideas yeah. from Jamie, and they really are like, no, but the Federation is the right thing, and now they all really believe mm -hmm. it, and they're so cute. Indeed. Mm -hmm. I'm down. Guys, uh, an excellent episode. Before we get into our mid-season uh, rating, let's rate this episode out of 10 cups of real Janeway coffee, not the fake hologram stuff, the real stuff. And Twitch, give us your answers as well, guys. Go ahead. Let's go in the order from uh, the top of the show. Hawk, you're up first. Uh, ten. It was that was a great way of if the if you know. So this is a mid season and that. So we got more to. But like, they had an idea. They stuck. They stuck the landing. You know, they did great callbacks to the beginning episodes. I don't. Know. I don't know what more I could have asked for. You know, ten cups of coffee for me. Nice. Um, giraffe. I said nine. Um, there are some stuff that like are being clunky. Like for example, if Dal doesn't like push the head out of Dreadnought, then they don't get the message. You know, I'm like, eh, okay. Sorry, time out. I, I I I messed this up because we agreed last week that we weren't going to rate last week's episode, and I didn't think about this going in. If we had to rate these episodes together as one, that's what I'm doing. That's what that's you do. I just want to make sure. Oh, okay. I just yeah. want. Well, no, I want to make sure everybody's doing that because I didn't specify yeah. that. Yeah. Because he punched so. the head off last episode. This head so, guy yeah. kind of punched off this. <laughs> yeah, but the message didn't. Play. It, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Go on, giraffe. I knew what you were saying. Yeah, nine out of ten. There's something that are not like a bit like forced, but I mean, come on, like it's writing, right? Uh, and I do think that a time amok is the best episode of the season, and this one is not as emotional as I don't know. Um. Tearing me apart, <laughs> then time and mark. So. Tearing me apart, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, and it was in that episode, by the way. He says like, "Tearing me apart." I was like, "Yes." The room. Nice. Uh, so so yeah, nine was. out of ten. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have, agree with draft there. Nine out of ten. I really liked it, but there are some things that just a little, a little bit bothered me. I thought it was a really good episode. It's a phenomenal mid-season finale, and uh, no Jet Reno. So you know. Oh. Yeah, you always got to take that. <laughs> Brittany. Tragic. 10 out of 10 for both. I was, I'm happy with it. I'm just loving this show and how it's done. For all the reasons I already mentioned earlier, I can suspend my disbelief for a good 30 minutes a week. So 10 out of 10. Nice. Yeah. Um, I still do. I, I agree with Giraffe, Time of Mock, and also Kobayashi, I think, are the, are the best episodes of, of the season. And I think I gave those both 10s. I can't give this as as a as a whole a ten either. I think I'm at that nine nine point five cups of coffee range. Really good. Stuck the landing. I mean, this writer's room is so freaking brilliant, and we know how many of them are like Trekkies and and nerds like us, and and it shows. It's just absolutely amazing. Nine point five. I'll I'll go. I'll give it that point five. Nine point five out of ten cups of coffee over on Twitch. Real quick. 
Let's no. see what we've got. No, no, tweet, no. tweet no. just banned Nami Composer. No. Did you... It didn't ban oh, it. No. It just took off that. No. Good job. Nami just messed it. Oh, no. Five seconds. For five seconds, Nami, sorry. She got um, really excited. She got really it's excited. all caps, I think. Yeah. I love that Nami went all caps. Um... <laughs> Sorry, on no. on Twitch, Haven goes, if I uh, rate the single episode, it's nine. But if I rate both episodes as a single episode, it's a solid 10. Uh, Joaquin, slowly, I can't get over that name. Joaquin 10 out of 10 for both episodes. Slowly. Jay Krabs said this episode was a 10. This half of the season was perfect. Uh, you and who's Amy, this is the strongest first season any Star Trek series has ever had. Debatable. It's still also in its half season. So, um, but I, I appreciate the sentiment. Engineer 21 no, he says 10 out of 10 proto stars for me. Uh, let's see, nine out of 10 from NY Rylight. I wish the other Trek shows could do as good a job sticking to landing. <laughs> Nami gives it a 10 out of 10 cups, cups of coffee, but also in parentheses, not biased at all. Nami, come back. You can blame it all on <laughs> me. Blame it all on Nightbot. Um, yep. yep. Sorry, <laughs> Nightbot. You stink. Uh, okay, guys. Let's give Star Trek Prodigy's first half of their first season. Yeah, mid-season review. Let's do it out of... Where is my... Ten I'm proto lost. drives. Is that what it is? Thank you, Brittany, for mm -hmm. being there. I've lost my page. Yes, ten yeah. proto drives for the mid-season out of ten. Where are we? 10 out of 10, once again, for all the things I rant about. That's it. Then we'll go in reverse order. Eric. Oh, um, yeah, uh, 10 out of 10. This is probably the best first season of Star Trek out of any of the Star Treks. Tied with Lower Decks. That's exactly yeah, what I Yeah, yeah, say. yeah. I'll uh, go with that. Yeah, I agree. Decks. I agree. The animated Treks are going the Animated hard. Treks are probably yeah. the best. Because they can't afford to have a bad first season. Let's mm, be honest. That's fair. They that's can't fair. afford it. NTS. <laughs> Draft. <laughs> yeah, 10 out of 10. Excellent first season. Go animated track. Ooh. Hawk. Uh, I got to go 10 out of 10. This was a great first season. Um, I think like the talent they have in the writing room uh, really kept in mind that we're writing for kids, but we know that behind those kids are going to be their uh, their adult parents. who Their trekky parents. Them. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have kids but like to steal the account information it made my kid want to yeah, watch more yeah, star Beckett. trek or star trek in general which you know she didn't have any interest in before so mm -hmm. if that doesn't get a 10 out of 10 yeah. you have a um, way that's a gateway mm -hmm. uh over on twitch haven says first uh, and people remember this is the first half is this episode this season is 20 episodes first half of the season uh 9.75 proto drives uh, walking slowly 10 out of 10 for the first half of the season um i there were some episodes that i didn't love um i also had a massive issue with doll for most of the season that all being said i'm still going to give this a 10 out of 10 proto drives simply because my kid watches star trek and doesn't just watch it is like mad that it's not on and for a few months and that's the goal and that's the dream and Mm -hmm. getting like I, a few weeks ago during an episode we were talking about warp drive and stuff like i picked up my discovery ship and showed her how everything worked and she wasn't bored and <laughs> the goal and the goal julian was like finally for the yes. first time in my life i showed someone a ship and they weren't yeah the, the goal got the goal got met so i love it uh, julian i'm out of 10. i i wonder like now because we both didn't like dial at the beginning right yeah. i wonder if we watch it now if we're gonna appreciate him more now that he's better you better I think we might. We'll have to see. Yeah, we'll do a rewatch re -watch before we come back. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the episode five shift that happens for yeah. all the characters. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. one more rating: NYR Light nine out of ten. Uh, it's way ahead of TAS for me, but behind Lower Decks. And and that's the other thing I do want to say: Lower Decks for me still takes the cake for best first season of a Star Trek show ever. I mean, uh, it is. It's for Lower Decks. We are the target. Well, we, we're, we're the target, myself, but the like, target. yeah, there was not like, a single, and not to say that there was a bad episode of Prodigy because there was no bad episodes. There were just a couple, maybe meh episodes. Lower Decks didn't drop the ball once for me in its first season, so I gotta that's give it because they I gotta juggle give, it. They, they, they do. <laughs> um, 
But I will say that we're also comparing it, once again, it's only the first half of the season. So by the end, yeah. if there's like a yeah, that huge could finale, change. we might be like, oh my gosh, oh, that, it'd be that lower could deck. absolutely change. That's <laughs> right. Never know. Maybe if they fired all the writers and brought other people on, yeah, that'll happen. But the koala like, shows up again? That, that that Nami in the in the chat is just going, oh my God, Brittany. Like everybody is affected by your puns, even Nami, celebrities. Nami, I didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even do anything. <laughs> Guys, let's get about. in to the subspace to poll and mailbag <laughs> hailing frequencies are open and our soft space to pull for the mid-season finale Brittany, you decided you did want to change up some of my puns this week so i thought we would we would battle you get back again. to back let's go back to back uh do you want to go first this time because i think first. i went first me okay so for for the top spot i said 69 percent said nice. babycation claws yeah nice yeah. 69% said an absolute winner. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Point to Brit. <laughs> All right. Point to Brit. That's fair. All right. For now. <laughs> Quinner. All right. 17% said all good things. Wink. <laughs> Wink. I like that. Wink. That was a good yeah. one. Uh, I don't remember what percentage you said, but they said 17% it- said it was divine. Er. I feel like I've used that one before. I'm just saying. Mm-mm. No? I don't think you no. have. No. All right. Point it's okay. It's Julian. not as good as Gwinner. I start yeah, with yeah, I'm going to go with Julian on that one. Purely Thank for the you. wink. One, one. <laughs> one, one. <laughs> one, one. Just for the wink. Three percent said lost in translation. What was the percentage? Three percent. 3% said, just tell all right. Okay, Brit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No? Yeah. Yeah, Brittany. Like yes. Yeah. I yeah. Brittany, I gotta yeah. lean on Brittany. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Did, have we have we you did it for Jake and Pog. In, have you used Lost in Translation on the poll before? I don't think so. Because it's the first. Maybe. No? No? Because no. this is the first time that they were like. Collective, let us know. I think <laughs> it's the first yeah, well, time it applied to an episode that you used it. So all right. it was good. All right. Oh, thanks. Um, all right. And the final one, 11%. And I don't understand you people. So 11? They yeah, looked 11. at a Medusin, okay? They couldn't help. <laughs> they looked at a Medusin. And, the, and 11% said, you'll go mad. You'll go mad. I thought yeah. you would have wrote, don't look. Um, <laughs> but 11% said, soul unwanted. Mm. That's what they called the diviner at mm-hmm. the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's not a good oh. oh, thank you. You know what? I like I like Jer- I like Britney's for that one. Who's it's oh, all Hawk. Hawk, you decide. Hawk. Oh. This is when Hawk oh. just disappears. <laughs> Hawk thinking Nami. The Homer Simpson <laughs> meme. <laughs> Point to Julian. Yeah. I think it's split two two though, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's taken. It. It's a tie. Good. It. Your, yours were good. I it's just Starfleet. To be it's Starfleet. It's a tie. Of course, it's a tie. Uh, let's get in to the mailbag. We only have two tonight, so you you guys can fight for him. Who wants the mailbags? I want Smick. <laughs> right, you can think Smick. Who wants Havens? I'll take Havens. I read so much. Hawk, I'm go out. Ahead. <laughs> oh, wait. There's only two. Yeah, there's only two. Yeah, I Hawk, like, go ahead. Let me read first. <laughs> so Haven wrote, I rewatched this two-parter as a single episode, similar to the first two episodes were watched as a single episode, and I felt like you needed to watch both as a single one. Yes, Fefinod- thank you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Fefinod said last week that the episode was a culmination of all the things this crew learned. I will go one step further and say not only the crew, but even the miners, with the two that wanted to talk about all their feelings they had but couldn't say. But can we please acknowledge Giraffe was right! Yeah, Giraffe is right. Yeah. <laughs> giraffe is like, yes, I know. This is my giraffe. <laughs> This show is an introduction to Star Trek for the next generation, like Julian and Eric's children. But seeing Zero's <laughs> ability actually makes me want to go watch TOS and see what Medusans can do. Also, a huge shout out once again to last week's guest, Nami Melamud. I am so I am sad that it will be a few weeks before we can hear your work again with the it's next be like episode a few of months. Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's going to be a little while. Tragic. <laughs> With the next episode of Star Trek Prodigy, thank you for all you have done. And I think he speaks on behalf of all of us, too, in that because she's knocked it out of the park. Yeah, yeah. For sure. All right. SMK wrote. I said it. I said it right. (laughs) Smick. 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 Sm
<laughs> this two-parter did a lot of work. It functioned at a pseudo season as a pseudo season finale and was possibly planned as one at one point the episode wrapped up the diviner thread efficient effectively i have some conflicted feelings regarding the zero plot line and this being a children's show specifically the idea that zero exacted revenge or vengeance on the diviner but i won't belabor the point i may not show this series to my kid yet but when they are older i will i wonder how old his kids are yeah i agree yeah um it is beautiful has good intentions and messages in the writing and is a great addition to the trek franchise even if the timeline is totally frailed right now frailed Frailed. from uh i believe that's farscape oh okay right i I didn't watch farscape i didn't either but i I feel like that is definitely collective other people (laughs) collective yeah Um, don't don't look it up don't look it up or say it um um, so so uh because because she's doing it i'll i'll do it too nami on twitch goes because hearing music and stuff uh you know a few months out for for prodigy nami goes uh eyeballs ha 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 earlier than you think so mm. you can you you guys can can decipher that but we we will keep our lips sealed i, I um, julian is your younger is your son watching the show did he watch it so so caleb every every once in a blue moon will come over and be like i love prodigy and then every now and then he'll be like i hate prodigy because he's <laughs> only three and it's either love or hate with everything yeah Le- so, liar's three as well and she'll be like i yeah. love it and then she'll be like it's scary sometimes i'm like yeah yep. sometimes yep. it is scary <laughs> yep so i love it uh, but it's still sometimes but, scary. but <laughs> cecily is six and she's absolutely in love with the show yeah so um, snk confirms that my, was farscape guys we we are back to star trek discovery next week we're back to our rated r ways which thank god um like it's hard it's hard but discovery is back discovery is back (laughs) i want to i want to quickly thank before we go uh, i want to quick quickly thank the guests that we had on uh for the uh, the first 10 episodes of project I want to thank uh, Aaron Walkey for coming on and talking to us all about this show and its future. I want to thank Bonnie Gordon, the Ooh. voice of Prodigy or the Protostars computer for coming on. And obviously Nami Malumad for coming on and talking about the, the beautiful music of Star Trek Prodigy. We can't wait for this show to come back on. Hawk is ready for discovery. We're ready for <laughs> yeah. discovery. Oh, yeah. Giraffe and, and, and is ready. Backgrounds? And we had Jan- Janeway today, and next week we're going to have Sonic for Martin Green. Yeah, right. like <laughs> I'm not, not going to live that Please. down. I'm not going to live that down. Yeah. Guys, we that's going to do it. D- join us Join us directly following this episode for an encore rewatch of A Moral Star, not only part two, but part one. We're going to watch them back to back uh, as an encore watch along in the watch along channel on our Discord. So for Hawk, for Giraffe, for Brittany, for Eric, I'm Julian. I will say live long and prosper. Majram, good night. Thanks for beaming into our podcast today. If you want to keep the hailing frequencies open, you can subscribe on Apple and Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Like what you hear? Put in a good word with Starfleet and leave us a five-star review.